Hey guys, so I want to talk about the basics of Revit Zones. Revit Zones are made up of spaces. You can make as many zones as you want. Um, also, you can make as many spaces as you want as well, um, as long as you keep adding new areas to the building. Um, so, to kind of show you what a space is, this is kind of what a space looks like when you select it after it's been placed in a, an area. And <coughs> it kind of looks like rooms. Those um, would be collectively put into a zone, multiple spaces or even individual spaces. This is what the system browser looks like and if we filter to the zones, we'll see that in this uh, MEP advanced sample model there's a bunch of different zones in here and then within those are different spaces. So what I'll do is I'll close this and we can take a look at that. So. To the right, we'll have our zones. Uh, to open up your system browser, all you would have to do is go to your View tab, User Interface, turn on System Browser. You'll see here that there's a question mark. That means it's not placed in the model. You'll also see down here this uh, orange color, and that means it was specified that it's not an occupied area. Now, if it's uh, green like you see here, then it's an occupied, and it's also placed within the model. Uh, you can select them from here which is kind of nice and you can select all the different ones that are associated with this zone. You can also right click and say show and it'll just zoom in on that. Now as you see here in these uh, spaces if they're not placed in the model they're still actually in the project like you see here. If you want to delete them entirely from the project what you would do is right click and delete but you could also uh, create a space schedule that you can delete them from there as well. So to kind of show you how to do this, what we'll do is delete all these different spaces and we'll just start applying new ones to those areas and then we'll create our own zone. So <clears throat> you'll see here that we have ones already there. So what I'll do is I'll delete them. We don't need those in the model. Now every project that you start will have a system already created for zones or it'll have a zone created already and it'll, you'll see it in the system browser and it's the default one. That one's in every project and anytime you start placing spaces that's where it goes uh, originally. So to start we'll start placing some spaces so we'll go in here and add them to these different areas All right, and then you can see here that they're placed, they're in the model, here they are in their different names. Now, if you do want to name them, if you select them, you can come down here and change the number and the name of the space. And then if you keep scrolling through the properties, you can also see what zone it's associated with. So here we have zone default. Now, if we want to change this, what we'll do, since we want to create a new zone, see that there's zone 54, we'll create a zone 55, so we'll just come up here, click zone, we'll see that it's added to the system browser as zone 55, we'll extrude that, and we can see that 91D space was added to this project, or to this zone, we'll see if we select it, it's because we had it selected when we created the zone itself. Now, I can't tell you why sometimes this doesn't work, but you can select multiple zones and then, or multiple spaces, then create a zone. It'll move it automatically down. Uh, but half the time, it doesn't seem to work correctly or it's a hit and miss. Um, I could be doing something wrong. I'd like to know um, if that is the case. Uh, definitely, you know, leave a comment. Um, so we can see this one's already been added. So what we'll do is start to add more um, spaces to this zone. Uh, so we'll come up to the edit zone button and then here we can add, remove spaces and then finish and cancel. So what we'll do is we'll start adding these different areas. We already have this one so it's not highlighting but if we select that, select that one and we can see that they're moving from the default into the zone 55 and we see we have them all in there now. So what we can do is scroll down there and kind of see, make sure that it's um, correct. We'll come over here, 
finish editing the zone and then we can see that now zone 55 has all the correct spaces associated with it now what's cool with the system browser is we can um, kind of display a variety of information right now it has specified power load lighting load and then occupied area to edit that you would just come up here to your column setting and then you have a variety of options that you can add or a variety of columns that you can add to your system browser just to kind of give more information to what's going on in those different zones so you can come in here and add what you want so there's general uh, mechanical <clears throat> and then piping and electrical that doesn't really have anything for this uh, particular thing so what we'll do press OK from there um, and then there's also this option to auto fit all columns and all that pretty much does is scales it correctly now if you want to again you know remove these spaces what you can do is either come in here and delete them from here which is just going to give you that error that tells you that it still lives in the model and if we scroll down we can see that they're um, popping up in that question mark just saying that they're not placed anywhere and if we want to delete them entirely from the model we'll uh, right click press delete and then we'll get this prompt we can click through that and then ultimately if you want to delete a zone you can right click it and then delete that and what this is going to do is give you this prompt which says this will delete the select zone and any associated tags we can press ok to that and then what we'll do is we'll scroll back up to default and then we can see that those spaces from the uh, from zone 55 have all been moved back to the default location so we could create a new zone or whatever and um, start to uh, associate, it, associate those to the correct um, correct zones and if you want to change the zone name all you would have to do is select on them uh, whatever zone that you want to work with and then over here in the properties window if you scroll down a bit you'll find that there's a variety of parameters under identity data and name is one of them and you can just name them uh, whatever you want we can see that that's been shifted down here so um, you know it allows you to better organize your zones and whatnot so uh, um, which is always handy especially when you're start you start placing rooms and stuff and you know you get uh, you know, um, times where for some reason a room has been removed from a from a um, being placed in the model you can easily kind of filter down and identify those things either through here or through a, a space schedule. So hopefully this kind of helps you out with just the basics of zones and kind of how to work with them. Let me know if you have any questions on that and um, uh, or comments or whatnot. Definitely reach out and thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.